Hey, okay, let it be known. I'm working hard when I ain't on the phone. This ain't a hunt, this ain't a phone. Grind never stopping, I'm keeping it cold. Unlocking the door with the holy key. You supposed to be this close to me, and hopefully, you understand G.O.D. Maybe this cold, and I'm talking like no degrees. What's up, guys? Welcome to It Needed to Be Said. This is Tyreek Hill, and I'm sitting here with my co host, Mr. Julius Collins. Guys, welcome to the show, man. This is the first time we are doing this. This is about to be special, man. Guys, um, coming on to the show today, we're going to have Drew Rosenhaus. But before we get to Drew Rosenhaus, I want to introduce my co host. My co host is not only my lawyer, but he's also a good friend of mine, a best friend of mine. So, Julius, if you don't mind, take the mic away and man, introduce yourself. Man, I appreciate that introduction. Um, Julius Collins, man, attorney Julius Collins. The law office of J.B. Collins. I'm fresh out of Atlanta, fresh out of Buckhead. I got a call from Tyreek, the cheetah man. Been knowing him for now for a while. Came on as his lawyer. And we just knocked, we just, for one, we knocked everything out of the park that we was working on. I think I think that goes without saying, right? Oh, for sure, man, for sure. We knocked it out, part, out the park. That's why, it, you know, you, you putting in that work, right? But no, man, I appreciate you calling me on, giving me this opportunity, and we're gonna knock it out, man. Let's oh yeah, it. it's gonna hey, it's gonna be a blast, man, because you know anything that the cheetah does, the cheetah, the cheetah's gonna do it the cheetah way, and that's fast, and that's look good, play good, feel good, and just like the dolphins did me, they they paid me good. So with that being said, Drew, how you feeling, Drew? How you feeling? It looks like you were in a station wagon, oh. Drew. So Drew, how you doing, man? How you living? Doing great, cheetah. Great to speak with you and Julius. Um, I'm on the road in Connecticut with my family. I didn't want to miss your your broadcast here. So um, I'm doing this as we, we drive from uh, Yale University to LaGuardia Airport. So good to be on with you guys and, uh, and everything's going well today. Well, Drew, I just got one thing to say, man. You are probably one of the best men I know in my life. And you are truly a trailblazer for just doing this for me. You know, and just also having a family in the background, man. So shout out to you, team dad, girl right. dad. And um, let's get this show yeah. on the road, man. Let me just say, Tyreek, I appreciate the kind words. It's, you know, I consider you to be a future Hall of Famer and without a doubt, one of the most electrifying players that's ever played in the NFL. This is my 35th year as an NFL agent, and I've never represented a more talented guy than you. And we've got a bunch of clients in the hall of fame. So the, the feeling is mutual. Um, you know, one of the things I, I love about working with Tyreek is he's a family man. I've gotten to know his kids, his, his uh, parents, his grandparents. Oh, thank you, um, Drew. Thank you. Know, you. For, for not only is, not only is Tyreek a hall of fame player, he's a hall of fame person. Julius, you can attest to this. And for sure. I've all, I've always said to Tyreek that, you know, not only is he the fastest guy in the NFL, but he's also got the biggest heart. And uh, that's a rare combination. You know, he's the cheetah and he's the teddy bear. He's both <laughs> of those animals, so. Drew, you want to know what's crazy, man? When, when I was growing up, my mom used to always tell me my biggest strength will always be my biggest weakness. So my biggest strength is, is my heart, you know, and I'm always caring for people and people you know, always running over me and stuff like that. So I'm like you said, man, I'm I'm always do what I can for people, but sometimes that can also be a weakness of mine also, man, just caring for people. You know, so but anyways, well, man. You know, Tyreek, it's it, it's it's impressive that, that you acknowledge that, you know, and that's real life. And right. uh, you know, people don't realize that even somebody as successful as you, you're the highest paid non quarterback in the NFL. With all that success also comes a lot of pressure, a lot of requests, a oh, yeah. lot of responsibility, and it's impossible to make everybody happy all the time, you know, right. and you, you definitely try your very best every single day to do things the right way, and you're a man of uh, character and integrity, and, you know, we can't control other people, but we can't control what we do, and you're to be commended for all the fine work that you do with your foundation and all the money that you raise through your charities. Right. You know, the commitment that you make to young people. People don't realize you're a volunteer high school coach last season. Man, look. Uh, there in right. Kansas City, just being hey. a wide receiver coach. And you got, took your valuable time to do that. We, we could be here all day. I've shown up. Where got to. 
Hey, that's you what I do, man. You got to volunteer, man. Like, you got to give back to the game, man. Like, if, if, if that's one thing I've learned, you know, like, I know my time is going to come and go, but I'm 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 going to always try to find ways to give back to the game of football, man, because I love this game so much, man. My dad taught me the game, you know. His dad taught him the game. So, and the way I look at it is my purpose in life is to teach the ones up under me, not only my kids, but – the younger generation, the game of football, you know, because if you really love the game, if you're really passionate about the game, you like you want to see the game continue to grow beyond you, you know. So that's the way I look at it, man. But, Drew, before we go, there's there's one quote or there's one question that I want to ask you But before we move on. Sure. If you don't mind me asking. And the only, only thing I need is a yes yeah. or no. <laughs> if you could live – Forever, would you live forever? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> Good. Yes. Now you got to follow up with why. <laughs> hey, why? no, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I guess that, that's it. Like that, I yeah, mean, I, I, I really can't. But you, the way. You want me to articulate on that? I'll nah, tell you that. nah, nah. I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and this is the way, and this is the way that I live my life, you know. Um, there's something um, Larry King was asking. We all know who Larry King is. He's the famous television host. Right. Right? Um, Larry King yeah. was asked, if you could live forever, would you live forever? You know, and Larry King clearly said yes. Right. And the dude who asked him that told, said, okay. Um, he said, it is my knowledge that I, I'm going to die that creates the focus of being alive. Right? Right. The urgency of accomplishment, the need to express the love, not now, if we could live forever, why ever get out of bed? You know, because if you could live forever. There's no urgency. There's no urgency, bro. It's, you could just, you got, you got infinite amount of time to accomplish infinite anything you want to do. Infinite amount of time to do whatever you want to, man. So. That's the way I look at life, man. If I could live forever, I I definitely say no, man. Cause, man, look, each and every day is an opportunity for me to get out my bed and to be great and be better than who I was the day before, dog. And that's the way I look at life. But Drew, what about you, man? You know, I listen. I I, I love I love that philosophy, Tyreek. And and you are a driven individual, and you make every day count. Right. And everything you said is. Uh, it's extremely articulate and right on. I, I guess the way I looked at it was um, I have found so much joy from the simple things in life, from uh. look, looking at my son, smile, my kids laugh. I, 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 I guess I could do that forever, man. I, you know, they're grandkids. And to me, the, the love that you have from your family is something that you just can't get enough of. And, I wish I could love, be here man. forever for them. And obviously, you know, I, I guess that that's just, to me, love is just so special. It's mm -hmm. something that I wish I could do for all eternity, if that makes sense. But I got a question for you. Um, it, but if you could wake up every day and just knowing that you could have your kids love every day and just to see your son's face every day, would you get out of your bed every day? You know, just to see your son smile, just to be around your family every day, every day, because you know, every day that you wake up, you're going to be alive and you're going to be around your kids. Right. You know, because yeah, now I, because mean, I, I, I think what I think what you guys had to say is really valuable, because if you have something for eternity or forever, you really don't appreciate it. And there isn't that that special there you go. sense of, of time and, and it being precious. So. Yeah, listen, you guys, you guys really taught me something today that I think is extremely valuable that, you know what, the fact that we can't live forever is really uh, what makes life so special. We, we live to max it out, probably because we know it can be taken away at any time. Yeah. And right. um, that's something that I have a lot of respect for. I, I will tell you that hypotheticals aside, I, I live my life to the fullest every day because I know it's not going to be forever. And, you, you know, in my mind, you get a chance and you have an opportunity with your life and you need to take advantage of it. I, I for one, uh, agree with you, Tyreek, that, that this world is all about giving back. And 
helping others and, and teaching others and passing along with the lessons in life that you've learned and um, and obviously knowing that life is um, something that's a gift that we could lose at any time. It certainly is an incentive to make the most of right. that time. Right. Right. I hate I hate to break uh, up y'all. I, um, I know that. Hey, that was very yeah. sentimental, that Drew. That was very sentimental. Like, y'all just went deep. <laughs> that was deep. I hate to break up uh, so. Luke Skywalker and Yoda moment. But let's go <laughs> Let's go into it this way. That was deep right there, Drew. We Drew, rolling. when you first saw Tyreek yeah, perform. Yeah, it was. When you first saw Tyreek perform at the Combine, even before then. I know, you, I know you do your homework, Drew. I've been around you enough to know you did your homework before you went and you yep. actually seen him. What made you want to sign Tyreek Hill? In that moment, what you know, out of I, all the players you represented, all the talent you've seen, what about Tyreek made you want to sign him? You know, Tyreek is probably a once in a generation talent. Oh, thank um, you. So we're we're not going to see another guy like him, uh, probably in our in our lifetimes. I, I think Tyreek has a skill set that is unique to him that comes around. Um, every generation, uh, and I recognize that in him. I mean, he's just not a, a, a just another great football player, or all pro, but he has a skill set that I think is unlike anyone that's ever played in the NFL. And it's not just his speed; he's he's a tremendous competitor. Um, he's a complete receiver. He'll run every route. He takes a great deal of pride um, in winning. I just recognize, Julius, that, that Tyreek was just a very unique talent and person. Uh, and as an agent, you're, you know, you're lucky to work with someone like that that comes around once every few decades. I think Tyreek is the most explosive player that's ever played in the history of the NFL. And I'm not sure there'll be another guy that, that has his unbelievable characteristics. So, hey, 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 give it 10 you know, years. My son will be there. <laughs> I, I think I think years from now in posterity, people will be talking about Tyreek as one of the greatest players to ever play in the NFL, and, and he's leaving quite a legacy off the field as well, which I'm extremely proud of. You know, I, I've seen a lot of the adversity that Tyreek's had to go through in his career it's not like he was a first round pick right out of the gate was the first pick of the draft. I mean, things weren't easy for him. And yet he always competed and battled and made the most of, of his life and his opportunities. And you got to have a tremendous respect for the competitor mm -hmm. in him and someone that doesn't give up and right. is a fighter. And it's a great example. You know, people don't realize Tyreek was a fifth round pick. Right. And um, he overcame a lot of adversity in college in the NFL to get to where he is today as the highest paid non-quarterback. That's an accomplishment. That's a historical accomplishment that he earned. Well, not only through his hard work and talent, but through his heart and his determination. Well, Drew, a lot of that, man, is, you know, just just my parents, man, just just implementing me every day just putting it inside of my brain that I got to be different you know as a kid you know you know there are a bunch of people in the south georgia you know who can play football right and sure. we know that like there's talent th yeah. there's tons of talent in south georgia you know but what what really made me different was just my attitude man and just my mindset and just my approach about you know me just wanting to be different you know so i wanted to go to i wanted to go to a big d1 you know, so I couldn't. My grades was wasn't 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 A's or B's or my GPA wasn't where it needed to be. Right. You know, so I was like, look, I gotta sacrifice this. I gotta sacrifice that. So I went to JUCO, and then once I went to JUCO, man, I got my grades right, man. And then obviously I could play football. So the rest is history, man. You know, so I like just being. Just being that ultimate competitor, man, being feisty, being a small guy who can play receiver, who can block, 
who can put guys on their behinds <laughs> at any time. Like I'm, I'm talking about linebackers. I'm putting <laughs> linebackers on their behind. Like, I gotta see the clip, man. You, you, I'm, I'm, I gotta find I'm the trying clip. to tell you, I'm <laughs> different, man. Like clip. I compete different, man. Like nah, for and, sure. and I don't fear nobody. You know Facts. what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, the way I look at it is, every man bleeds, and every man is gonna die the same way. You are gonna die, so. Speaking Man. of which, I'm glad you transitioned to that. You said you're smaller than a lot of guys. The yeah. traditional receiver, the, the DK, traditional uh, yeah. DK Metcalf, DK. Ocho Cinco. Right. Well, we saw a, a, a rebound DK Metcalf in South Georgia this weekend. Oh yeah, man. But no, you're smaller than all of them. So talk about how was that transition, right? I know in high school you played almost every position. I know in college you pretty much did any and everything you wanted to do on the field. Right. But how was that transition? Because if I'm not mistaken, whenever you went to the Chiefs, you went in on special teams, right? Correct. Talk about that work ethic. You know, you and Drew, and he he's seen it as well, and so many players like that work ethic to go from special teams to the highest paid wide receiver in the NFL today. Man, look, check this out. When, when, when I first got drafted by the Chiefs, man, they had a receiver there um, named Jeremy Macklin, right? right? So Jeremy Macklin was a dude. He was an icon to me, right. legend to me. I was like, Jay Mack from the Philadelphia Eagles? I used to play with him on Madden all the time, right? <laughs> so, look. J-Mac, man, was the coolest dude I know. Still one of the coolest dudes I know. I just talked to him recently. Shout out to J-Mac, man, coaching the high school team in Kirkwood. Yeah. You know, um, he would like, he would, I would basically copy everything he would do. Right. You know, but in my head, I'm like, I'm going to take his dude's spot. I'm Ooh. better than you. I'm faster than you. I'm younger than you. You just shot I, him out. And I, I, I can, you I was can do it. Nah, like real talk, though. Like that's motivation. That, that's my mindset, though. Right. Like that. Right. You remember what I told you? My mama, my mom, well, my grandparents, they always taught me if you're not, if you're not one, then like some, like some, some not given. You got to be number one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So everything that J Mac would like had the receivers do, like even if some of the other receivers wouldn't show up, the workouts, to to bowling, to skating, whatever the case may be, the running, I'm there. Everything J Mac doing, I'm doing. I'm copying everything that he do. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm doing more. You know what I'm saying? So then it came time. Like after that year, after that one year with the Chiefs, the Chiefs end up letting J Mac go. Right. Then like I ended up taking the spot. So I had learned everything from J Mac, man. Then I added my own little thing to it. I added my own little twist to it. You had a lot of twist to it, bro. Yeah, I had a you lot had of twist a to, lot it, man. to it, man. So, so how was that though? Like even Drew, as your, as a as an agent, Drew, have you ever seen anything that insane to come from you know college, right? West Alabama, West Alabama, right? To go what fifth round, fifth round, and then just take over the NFL. Have hey. you ever seen that transition from special teams no, no, to the I, highest I, paid I, I, I think you know a lot of people in history will look at. I think a lot of people historically will look at Tyreek as a fifth round pick and say it was one of the greatest fifth round picks ever. Just like people look at Tom Brady going in the sixth round. Oh yeah, and commenting to the that he was the sixth round pick. You know, I. Yep. I, I do think that Tyreek is one of the great uh, success stories, especially when you consider where he was drafted and what he's accomplished. Um, and the best is yet to come because, you know, he's he's been a world champion in Kansas City. He's played in four straight home AFC championship games. And now Tyreek has the amazing challenge of, uh, going to a new team and a young quarterback and helping the Dolphins who haven't been in the playoffs in many years um, become a winning team right? and become a winning organization. And I'm excited for Tyreek because this is going to be a great challenge for him and an exciting opportunity. And uh, I know he's going to, he's going to make a huge impact on this team, both on the field and off the field. Right. So I got, I got a question. And that's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Oh yeah, for sure, Drew. So I got a question. Thanks Kansas for the City, insight. Kansas City Chiefs, Drafty, right? Right. You go over there, you ball out, right? How was your time in Kansas City? I I, I definitely want both of you all to chime in on that because Drew, I know you went to a lot of the games. I know Tyree, I came to some of the games and I seen the transition. So how was your time in Kansas City? You want the first four years or you want the last year I just played? I want last year was crazy. I want the first four, and then on the last year, okay, it needs to be said. Okay, I'm gonna give you the first four years, real rap, man. First four years. It was great, man. Right. You know, I came in as a rookie, played with Alex Smith, one of the greatest guys that I that I will ever meet. Also, you know, um, played with played under arguably one of the greatest coaches of all time, Andy Reid. 
you know, learned a lot <laughs> under uh, under a lot of great guys. So my, my first four years were great, man. I got a chance to play with the greatest. I feel like the greatest tight end of all time, Travis Kelsey, you know, big Zeus, you know. So it was Good great, boy. man. I, right. First four years were great. Then Patrick Mahomes came in and just changed everything around, you know. The young phenom, different, throwing the ball at about 85 yards, crazy, you know. So changed the game. Crazy right. man, so it definitely helped the team out. We went to the two Super Bowls, we won one, you know, just like Drew said, we went to I believe three AFC championships, right? Or four, right. you know, so it was great, it was great, man. Everything inside the building was great, you know. So now I, mean, I, I have no complaints. Now I need, I need you to be candid, I need honesty from you or Drew because if it was so great, what happened to last year to now we sitting in Miami? I mean, Drew, you want to answer that first, or you want me to get into it? Because I got to kind of, I kind of lean up. Questions they need answered. Yeah, <laughs> let me answer it. Um, so, so frankly, guys, um, I want you to start with. Hold on, Drew. I want you to start with all the texts I sent after every week, though. Like every week, I used to yeah, text you. So I want you to start with that. It was, it was. There, there was, there was a lot of um, times during the year that we felt that Tyreek was underutilized um, and wasn't fully uh, appreciated uh, um, and that they really weren't taking full advantage of, of all of his ability and talent. But Tyreek's a trooper. He, he never made a peep about it. He never went to the media, was extremely the professional, right. but... Uh, Tyreek was a real champion and, and handled it, but it was frustrating um, at, at, on many occasions. Um, after a number of games, Tyreek and I would, would communicate, and, and uh, it was frustrating that he wasn't given a chance to do more to help the team um, in their efforts to win games. Right. And Tyreek's a very unselfish player. Correct. Um, and is the consummate team player. But there, there were a lot of things uh, during this season that just felt like it, there wasn't the same um, commitment to him. And, um, you know, we got through the year. Tyreek wound up having another all-pro year and made, uh, made, made another historical season and had an, uh, had an epic postseason as well. Mm-hmm. But, and once the season was over, we reached out to the Chiefs and we said, hey, you know, we want to we want to keep it going. Tyreek wanted to be there. You know, Tyreek wanted to be in Kansas City. That's that's but, you say that again. Oh, Tyreek wanted yeah, Ty to be in KC. Tyreek wanted to be in Kansas City. Wanted, we to, the team wanted to be in KC. We, we, tried man. To do an, we tried to do an extension with that. Tried, man. So I got a follow up question yeah. on that. All right. So this wasn't a situation that you demanded. A no, crazy amount of money, see, right? No, this I didn't. was a situation mm -hmm. where you know what you're capable of. Drew knows what you're capable of. Correct. The team knows what you're capable of, mm -hmm. but they just didn't utilize you. Now follow up on that. Right. Do you think this was a situation to suppress his stats to drop that value down when it came to a potential trade or signing? You, you know, <sighs> um, so so when, when when the season ended, just to uh, get to your question. We went to the team and we basically said, hey, you know, Tyreek did a contract uh, after his third year. He's outplayed that deal. Um, but we were really far apart on the numbers. You know, we felt strongly that Tyreek was the best receiver in football right. and deserved to get paid that way. You know, they were very complimentary of Tyreek, but they were not prepared to make him the highest paid receiver in football. Exactly. But and, Drew. And, but and, Drew. And then what happened was the Devontae Adams deal got done. And I called Tyreek and I said, look, here's a guy that uh, is, is older than you, isn't as accomplished in my mind as you in terms of all the things that Tyreek can do. Uh, um, with the football and mm -hmm. away from the football's ability to stretch defense and open things up for Kelsey. And when Adams got the huge deal, I, I spoke to Tyreek and I, we both agreed that we were going to put the pressure on the Chiefs, that they were either going to do a deal like that um, or it wasn't a great fit anymore because the respect isn't, isn't mutual if you don't see it that way. And, 
Um, I talked to Brett Veach, the team GM, and I outlined the deal that, that Adam's got and that it should be a no-brainer for them to do that deal for us. Right. And if, if they didn't want to do that type of deal, then we would get them a blockbuster trade. I flat out told them that I felt like I, I could talk to teams around the league and and bring a bunch of bring great compensation. And I think the Chiefs uh, initially wanted to challenge us and see what we could get uh, from other teams contractually and what we could also get. Crazy, right? But we uh, haven't, we haven't yeah, even reached you know, the crazy compensation part. Wise, we haven't even reached right? the crazy part yet. The crazy part, hold on, hold on, Drew, pause. I'm going to pause you. Crazy part is yeah. I, I talked to Patrick Mahomes. I talked to uh, Andy Reid, right, right. For, 30 min- for like 30 minutes or so. Right. I talked to both of them on the phone. I'm like, hey, coach, yo, like I don't even got to be the highest paid for real. Right. I just want to be – I just want to be put in, a, in, in, in like a realistic position – that's that's like realistic for me and my family, right? You want to be compensated for your talent. Exactly. I don't got to get thirty million. I, I'm 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 I, at least give me twenty five, right? Twenty six, right? You know, they they, they wouldn't even they wouldn't even giving <laughs> so, numbers. So completely to ignore the fact that you're taking two and three defenders across the field to make completely. way for, tra- for for Kelsey to have these completely, historical numbers. Completely, man. It's crazy wow. how how the business works, man. But like I say. I I tried my best. I talked to the big man, Andy Reid. Right. I talked to the quarterback. I'm like, look, can we make something happen? Right. Can we make something happen? Can the guarantee money make sense to me? Right. Can it make sense to my yeah, family, please? Yeah, you know what's please? fascinating was we are really deep in trade talks with the Dolphins and the Jets. Right. And it looked like a deal was close, and then Andy Reid got involved and spoke with Tyreek and asked Tyreek flat out, do you want to be here? And Tyreek said, yeah. I flat out said and yes. And Tyreek flat out told me. Flat out said just, yes, just I want to leave. Uh, Tyreek, you really tried, you know, and, and I think Andy wanted you to be there. And, you know, ultimately the, the team's offer just was millions of dollars short on the guaranteed compensation. And that's just, you know, in, in this world, you cannot, Tyreek's got, got children. You, you It's just. It's hard to walk away from millions and millions of dollars. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, quite frankly, uh, Tyreek had uh, a record setting career. He'll go down as the all time great Chiefs receiver. He had a great run there and did a lot for them. But obviously, they did not value him to the same extent that Miami and the Jets did. And when Miami offered and uh, all those draft picks, I guess the Chiefs looked at it and said, you know, we had a we had a great run with Tyreek. Um, and we've got a lot of Crazy, high price right? players Crazy on the team. Business. You know, and mm. they got a bu- they got they got a record amount of compensation. I right. It's the most I've ever so look, seen. So look, check this out. So, so look, check this out. If they don't value you in Comp- and like money wise, right? Right. But then, like, let, let's say I'm Brett Veach. Brett, Brett, Brett Veach was like, okay, we don't see you as twenty five million dollar receiver, but we're gonna try to get as many picks as we can up out of you. They literally try to get like how many picks they got, Drew? About five picks. Yeah, they which did get crazy, five. Which is crazy. Yep. They, they got three. This they year, valued two you. Next they year. valued me more than Devontae Adams, but they didn't want to pay me like Devontae Adams though. Crazy, they right? Value, they value your your talent and your skill enough to get that from someone else, but not to actually give it to you for your exactly, talent. Exactly, man. Crazy yeah, how backwards. the business is. It's backwards, right? So I said the same thing. So let me ask you this. Was there ever a situation throughout this last season where, I know Drew stated earlier, that you didn't feel like they uh, game plan for you more, right, throughout the, throughout the season? Did, man, does look. any game in particular <laughs> stick out that you feel like – I know, I know you by now. You feel like you could have made the change in every game. I could have made it. It don't matter if you lose by 100. You're like, you would have threw me the ball, I would have won that game. Exactly. Exactly, but man. Is I, there I, one I, game I, that sticks out where Baltimore, you just feel like? Baltimore Ravens, I had three catches for 14 yards. Crazy, right? The week before. Uh, How many targets on that? I have no idea. Probably like three targets, maybe. You can look up the targets, man. Week one, I went, what, for 189? Yeah. And we won the game. Come on, yeah. man! I, I just I just don't get it. Like if if teams are going to give us favorable one on one matches, one one on one matches against their best corner, I don't see why team I don't see why teams don't utilize their best receiver. Right. You know, and that's 
and that's where like probably me and the Chiefs fell apart right there when I'm like, yo, like I I don't mean to talk or be a diva in some situations, but hey, can I can I see the pill sometimes, please? Yeah, just give me the ball. Just give me the ball, please. So I just want to make yeah. sure all the listeners know that's your it. decision was not based upon solely the thirty million. No, no, it but, was. Of course, I got to take care of my family. Got to take care of my but family. But it was more so the disrespect you felt throughout the negotiation. It process. was a lot of things that 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 played into. Uh, uh, it was a lot of things that played into me leaving the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, like right before the season, I had I had a long talk with Andy Reid about my granddad having surgery, right. which is crazy. And I told him, I'm like, Coach, look. It's gonna be some. It's gonna be some days that I'm gonna be missing. You know what I'm saying? Cause I gotta fly back to Georgia to make sure my granddad is all right. You know, my granddad he had prostate cancer. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was a lot of things that transpired. You know, with me leaving the Chiefs. You know, and they like they didn't even want me to leave to go see my granddad. You know, and he was having surgery, right. prostate surgery. Right. And I'm like, yo, like this is like ridiculous. Right. You know. And now like I'm with the Dolphins. I tell coach like, coach, I'm gone. He's like, all right, cool. Just let me so this is not a shot at anybody. Let's, no, not let's a be shot clear. This is not a shot at anybody, but this just needs to be said. Right? I, I love Andy Reid. Bingo. I love Patrick Mahomes. Bingo. My brother forever. I just seen him at F1, by the way. Um, love Travis Kelsey. I love all my teammates. But you just had to answer the questions that just, all of the fans are asking. You know, some of the media pundits, they went out, oh, he's going to regret this trade. He did it for money. He did it for money. They work for money, so I don't, I don't see what the problem is. I just don't Every understand. Every day they, they go to the media, they go on the news, they work for money. Everybody going to go to work. You want to be paid. I just want people to understand that I went for 150 with Matt Moore as my quarterback. I love you, Matt Moore, versus the Minnesota Vikings. If you don't remember that game, 150 and one touchdown with Matt Moore as my quarterback. So who, hey, and two of So what you trying to say? And two of T is... 10, 10 Matt Moores. I <laughs> love Matt Moore, <laughs> but two of T is 10 Matt Moores. Huh? Let's get, the, let, let's get technical you know, right I, now, man. I was just going to tell you guys that, sure. you know, the trade the trade made a lot of sense on a lot of levels because you really, you really want to be a part of the organization that values you the most. Exactly. And, you know, Tyreek Tyre got basically the – full guarantee on the first three years of his contract that's very rare in the nfl and and the dolphins were willing to make nfl history and they wanted to build the franchise around tyreek and and that's really exciting to you know to go to a, a team that's in a beautiful city like miami and south florida and you know, it's 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 a great place to live. It's close to Tyreek's family. We talked about right. Tyreek's love for his family, his children, and right. his, his parents and his grandparents. What a neat opportunity for him, you know, to, to geographically go to the South and play for a team that really wanted to make him the face of the franchise. And, you know, that's not the case in Kansas City. You know, Mahomes is the face of the franchise. And, and, and in Miami, Tyreek's profile has picked up tremendously. You know, this trade, um, you know, we could have signed the same contract with the Chiefs, but there wouldn't be the same amount of, of notoriety and, and, and commitment. But what's crazy and, is I don't care about notoriety, though. I don't care about none of that, man. I'm from South Georgia, though. only thing I care about yep. is respect within the building. Notoriety outside the building, I don't care about none of that, man, right. because none of that – I ain't going to win us games Good on Sunday. Point. You know what I'm saying? Like Patrick, Kelsey, they can have all of that. They can have all of that. But 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 look, this is what I want inside the building. I want the head coach to know that on Sundays that that defense is feared Tyreek Hill. That that that's what I want head, the head coach to know. And the head coach do know that though. He know that. He know that that without the cheat on the field, he know that hey, Pat, you're going to have a long day today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pat, he heck of a quarterback, hell of a court, hell of a player. I love him to death, but come on, man. Sometimes I just want people to just be like, "Hey, treat like him." You know so, what I'm saying? So, so Drew, your transition. I know you went to law school, right? No, you got a JD. Yes. How did you become the most feared agent in this game? Like you're like the boogeyman. You're John Wick. <laughs> so of yeah, the agency. I, I, if they need they need you to kill a deal, they bring you in. If they can't get it done. Bring Drew Rosenhaus in. He's going to get it done. Bro, it was because of Any Given Sunday. He was on Any Given Sunday. You know that, right? <laughs> he got ALT the million dollars. 
<laughs> you got LT the million dollars. So, you got LL Cool J. LL Cool J the million dollars. Yeah, you know what? My my background is I was I was really brought up to be an agent. I'll, I'll explain. When I when I was a kid, we lived right down the street from the Dolphins training facility, and, and my father Robert, um, he became very friendly with a lot of the Dolphin players, and and they'd come hang out at our house, they'd eat dinner. I'd sit around with these guys when I was a young man, maybe 10, 11 years, 12 years old. And I listened to them talk about their injuries and their playing time and, you know, their contracts and their agents and getting cut and traded. And That's so I saw a man. different, yeah, I saw a different side of the NFL that you wouldn't ordinarily see. And, and I wanted to be, I wanted to be an agent. I, I fell in love with, you know, with, with the, the guys that would hang out at the house and, I thought they were the greatest and I wanted to do the same thing. And when I went to college, I went to Miami from 1984 to 1987. They won two national championships and they had some of the greatest players of all time, Michael Irvin and Vern Kosar and so many great hurricanes. And I went to school with these guys and I decided that, uh, I, that I was going to be friends with them. Like my dad was friends with the dolphin guys and, and so they come hang out and, and they just became like brothers to me. And when I went away to law school at Duke, um, I got an opportunity to intern for an agent that was representing a lot of the guys that I went to school with, mm -hmm. including Michael Irvin. And that's how I broke in the business. The, the love of, of my friends became my clients. It's something that I had prepared for since I was a young man. And, and, and while I was in law school, I had, you know, the passion as a 22 year old, the youngest agent to, um, to just do right by, by my friends and, and people I consider to be family. So and, it's not and every year it just grew and grew, you know? And so I think, I think I put, you know, it's easy. I put my clients first before my relationship with the teams, you do what it takes to make sure that your clients are treated right and are, are getting the, the, what they deserve and beyond and, and that's your job as an agent. I, I believe in that fiercely. So it's not about the money, ultimately, at the end of the day. I know a lot of people outside looking in, they think, oh, it's just about the money. It's just about the money. But from what I'm getting from you, Drew, is that it's, it's actually about the art of winning, right? The art to, of winning, To, to assist your clients in being able to secure their financial future moving forward and take care of their family. Right. And to be compensated for their value on the field. Absolutely. Well said. So, you know, Tyreek will tell you when, when Tyreek signed his contract and we got the trade done, he could see the joy that we had oh, for man. him and his family. And I think you cried more it, than me, man. It's, it's the great, <laughs> it's the greatest feeling in the world to be partners with, with Tyreek and our clients and, and help them maximize their potential and take care of their families and get what they deserve and beyond that's the love of the business that I have, you know, seeing the guys right. succeed and being a part of that and helping them and helping their families is way bigger than the checks that we get. You know, I, I could have just, you know, been a lawyer, but you know, I went to Duke for law school and all these guys were going to law firms and they thought I was crazy to just represent these players as a young man. And, you know what? I believed in that, that that so, was the, important and, so Drew, and, and something that I loved. And that's what counts to me. So, Drew, I got a question for you. What yep. do you see the NFL in about five to ten years mm. as, as far as business side, players, um, the whole CBA thing? What, what, you know, do you I see think the, the NFL going? is in a great place right now, Tyreek and Julius. Um, the NFL has never been more popular the tv ratings are through the roof we had the greatest games the cap is going in a up season I know that. last year the, the playoffs were great the nfl is overseas the nfl is in germany and england and mexico and you know the nfl is expanding worldwide the nfl's got deals now with streaming services like apple um and uh obviously amazon and I mean, it's just it's just very exciting to see the the relationships that they're developing in non traditional revenue like gambling. Oh. The NFL's caught up with the times, and they're they're making partners and taking advantage of 
that revenue stream. I'm just, I, I just feel like the NFL is, is in a great place and the future's never been brighter, you know, and, and that's exciting. I, I think the one thing I'd really like to see improve in the NFL is just more diversity. What do you, among what do you mean head by that? coaches, <laughs> oh, you know, uh-oh. among ownership and the general managers. We, we've got to develop a league that the ownership, the front office and the head coaches and the play callers are more representative of what you see on the playing field. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you like this, Drew. For Drew. Commissioner. Right, well, Drew, I'm going to tell you like this, man. As far as my experience in the NFL, it's all about who you know. You know what I'm saying? So if if you know an owner, if you know a GM, you know, obviously yep. they're going to pick their favorite head coach, right. you know, or somebody that they coach with or was on staff with in, in, in the past. So that's, that's all I got to say about that topic. Right. But right. now let's switch gears, all right? You go from KC, Cole. Now, I know you love beach volleyball, so I know Miami is prime real estate with you, right? Prime real estate, man. You in the 305. Yep. How has that transition been? I know the season hasn't started, but just that atmosphere of going from Kansas City to the 305. Oh, it's been great, man. You know, um, believe this or not, um, I feel like the same values hold inside the locker room with, with the Miami Dolphins as as far as, like, brotherhood. Mm-hmm. You know, um, coaches being close, players being close, and everything else. Um, two, two has been a great quarterback to play to play, um, to play play with. You know, Jalen Waddle has been everything that everyone has said. Fast, explosive, great guy outside of playing football. So, it's been fun, man. So, I mean, I'm very excited for the football season. I'm excited to see see where this team will go, which I know this team will go very far mm-hmm. because, man, I've, I've, I've had a chance to see Tua throw the ball to, to myself. But, man – that's the next question. Like he's a, hey, <laughs> he's that dude, bro. Like what Does a lot of people don't have. know. Like I'm not, like I'm not just sitting here, just I'm not, I'm not just sitting here, just saying this because he's my quarterback now. And and I'm you're not gonna give us the to tears, are you? Nah, that's bro, my like, quarterback. Like we're not like, gonna get that. I'm not trying to get more targets right now, but what I'm trying to say is, Tua is that deal, bro. He has an arm. He, bro, he has a heck of an arm, bro. He's accurate. He can throw the deep ball, and he actually goes through his reads. What, what people are like on Twitter are like saying, "Oh, he doesn't go through his reads." Man, this dude, that dude. So, so do you think it's just a comparison issue? You know, the media pundits. We've seen a yeah. lot of people talking about Tyreek. He's going to regret this trade. He's going to a quarterback who doesn't have an arm. He's this. He's that. I'm gonna tell you like this, man. How do you? How do you? How do you deal with that? Like, that's your quarterback. I know you're not going to give it the T.O. tears, right? right? I know you're not. But how do you deal with that? I know that's your quarterback. You got to protect him. Oh, yes. Man, look. But I know you say they got an arm. Right. Who got the strongest arm? Tua or Pat Mahomes? Tua or Patrick Mahomes? Obviously, like, I'm, I'm going to go with 1-5 as the, the strongest arm. But as far as accuracy-wise, I'm going with Tua all day. So which one would you rather have? The deep ball where you got to scramble around the field to try to go find it? Or do nah. you want that accuracy to hit you right in the bread basket on the run? I want it to hit me right in the bread basket, just like I did in the Buffalo Bills game and take it 70. And the rest is history. And again, this is not a shot at anybody. Right. This is just stuff that had to be said. It right? needed to be said. It needed so to be said. said. Because at the end of the day, everybody wants to know. The media, they kill Tua. They kill right? him. They destroy But you had practice with him. Right. You love the deep ball. I love the deep ball. But guess what, though? <laughs> guess what, though? I, guess what? I done... I done expanded my game, right. so now I'm doing a lot more than just a deep ball. Now I'm doing intermediate routes. I'm doing short routes. So now I actually need a guy who can, who can just get me the ball now and on a on a dagger route, on a corner route, or on a shallow cross route. You know, right now, right in my chest. So now I can do the rest. So, I make you look good now. So defense is about to get chopped up this season. Defense is about to get chopped. They've up. They've been getting chopped. They've been up, getting chopped up, man. But look, once you got Mike McDaniel calling plays, Jalen Waddle, Raheem Moster, Chase Chase Edmonds. You got Cheeto on this side, and you got Mike G right here on, on the tight end. Come on, man! Two of throwing, spinning the ball. Right. It don't, it don't, it don't get no, it don't get no better. Than I that. know you're a humble guy, right? I know that. I tell you that all the time. Like, bro, sometimes talk your toot your own horn. What does it feel like coming from the middle of nowhere, Atkinson County, Pearson, Georgia, to being the highest, not even the highest, the number one receiver receiver in the NFL? I know it was your dream to get to the NFL, but what does that truly feel like, that reality? 
I when mean, did it set in? Some, sometimes, man, it don't even set in, man. It probably won't set in with me till I'm about 40, man, because right now I'm chasing a dream. Like, a lot of people look at me and say, oh, he chasing the money, man. But for real, this shit about legacy for me. Like, I got too much pride in this game, dog. Right. Right. I refuse to let another man embarrass me. I refuse to go out each and every Sunday and let my team down, dog, because I love this game so much. You know, and I'm going to do everything that it takes within my body to lay it out on the field each and every Sunday for my quarterback, for right. my team, for my brothers, for and just for this organization, right. man. Because I love, I love this game so much, dog. So, you're an infamous TikToker. You love TikTok. I oh, get yeah. TikToks from you all the time. At night, two a.m., you might get a TikTok from time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? I love TikTok, man. Will the fans in Miami see the infamous dolphin dance? You with the Dolphins now? Will they get it? Oh no, nah, man. Nah, nah. That's not my thing, man. <laughs> not anymore. I don't know, nah. I don't know, nah. Depending on, hey, I got some crazy for my. I got my. I got some crazy for my first touchdown dance, though. You know, you know, Scarface was. You know, he had a crib here. I think, right? Scarface had a crib here, Drew. Are you, are you going Tony Montana? I'm going Tony. Oh man, going Tony got- Montana. Okay. Tony Montana, man. So Drew. Yeah. Hey, Drew. One more question, man. Yes. Before we let you go, man. Let's transition sure. to you um, catching a bull shark last week. Yeah. How did that feel, and why did you do something white? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get canceled um, now. You, you know I just what? didn't know what to I, say. I really almost went on this trip. No, us. no, I did not. I almost and go on this trip. <laughs> I did not, guys. So let's not get that. Yeah. You, didn't to, you didn't want to jump in and grab a bush? I, I actually, <laughs> I told Tyreek that I would do something crazy like that. And I just wanted to keep my commitment. So, Connor Williams, Tyreek's good friend and teammate. Don't be taking the offensive teammate, lineman. Connor caught, Connor fought a, a bull shark, a seven foot bull shark. Um, got, got him, got him to the boat. We were going to tag him, release him. And uh, I said to the captain, I love sharks. I've swam with bull sharks before. Are you okay with me jumping in and, and uh, swimming with that bull shark? And he said, that's crazy. <laughs> you're not, you're not to do it. They're, they're one of the most dangerous sharks in the water and you don't know what else is, is swimming around that bull shark. But so Drew, did you sign a waiver? Did you like, like no. what's going on here? Like what, like what if, no, no. what if you would have got yeah, no. eaten by a shark? Would you like, could you sue? Could you like, what's, what's going on? Like I, no, I, just, I think, Drew, I, I, think I mean, once you get Drew on those what? deep sea fishing boats, it's pretty much you're at your own risk. Cause oh, anything can okay. happen on those boats, you know? Um, but it was really, I've, I've had a lot of experience swimming with sharks, guys. It's, let, let's just say it's a hobby of mine. And um, that bull shark was beautiful. I jumped in. I was able to grab uh, his tail and, and, and swim right up with him. And we tagged, it was actually a her. We tagged and released her. So the environmentalists, yeah, can, can keep up with her and track her. And so Drew, they're you beautiful plan- animals. And... It was it was a lot of fun to uh, experience that. So Drew, how do you tell how do you tell if a shark is a girl or a boy? How I knew it was a her. How do how do you tell if it's a girl or a boy? Daddy, how you know? See, my daughter's asking. How did I know? Yeah, everybody wants to know. Everybody <laughs> wants to know this. I'm, we we even asking. How do you? Right. <laughs> Drew the marine biologist um, at night or something. Actually, the the captain the captain told me it was a female, so I can't take credit for it. But the captain's an experienced fisherman, um, so that's that's the answer to that question. But wow, I'll I got tell a you question. guys this, and I, 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 it was a lot of fun. And Tyreek, we'll have to do that another time. As long as it You'll doesn't involve me diving into the we'll water, jump in with the sharks. Yeah, that that's insane. <laughs> See, that's, that's insane. That's insane. Like, how do you position yourself to say, I'm going to jump in in the water with the shark? With a shark. And then just have a casual conversation with us like she was friendly and we're best friends now. Bro, do you know that? (laughs) Do you know that bull bull sharks are the Mark Henry's of sharks? You know, Mark Mark Henry (laughs) is a wrestler, big black wrestler. Bull sharks have that much testosterone in their body. And Drew tamed it and And became best friends with one of them. Drew playing. Shark tails. (laughs) Shark tails all over again. It's a different breed, man. No, different that's amazing, breed. Drew. That's but, amazing. But Drew, man, I just want to say, 
I want to thank you guys for having me on. Oh yeah, Julius. I know. I know you're a great lawyer, but now I know you're also a great co-host. Co-host. He's look, a man. man. Look, and I got to match his energy, man. I, I I tell people they be like, "Where are you at today?" I say, "Wherever the boss man calls me." Like I, we have to keep up. I think we were saying earlier, most people yeah. get 24 hours in a day. We get 48. 48 hours. We get 48, and we make it happen. That's how we live, man. Sorry. You know what's do. great about about your show is that you really get to learn about Tyreek and see what goes on you know really with with the type of person that he is and um that's why it needed to be said what's great you know you get to see the person Mm. and Tyreek's a wonderful guy and you are too Julius I'm glad I could come on with you guys and uh good luck with the show and look forward to seeing you both soon Drew thank you so much for joining it needed to be said if you could let us know the best up-and-coming podcast in the world please You've got to join host Tyree Kill and Julius Collins. It needed to be said. The very best. Thank you so much, Drew. Appreciate Con- you, Continue brother. on your long, ri- your long drive. It looks like you've been driving for hours now. He has been. So <laughs> make sure baby girl put on a seatbelt. For sure. Because <laughs> Julius is not playing. You got to put on those safety belts, man. We don't want you to get I in a ticket, man. I appreciate you both. I, I, I will see you guys soon. All right. Love, Drew. Appreciate you. So, man, look, you got craziest contract right now right right and now you starting the hottest podcast in the land right yes it needed to be said right what does that mean to you like what kind of guess would you have but first what does it mean it needed to be said like you got a lot on your chest right you just got to get it off right right I just I I, I just want to be that athlete that plays football well that that active football player that has a platform that's just not scared to say anything, right? Right. You know, because there are a lot of people who are, you know, just literally just scared to say anything and just everything and just be a part of the council culture, right? So right. I just want to be that that athlete that, that says, you know what, I'm going to live life. I'm going to do what I want to. And basically, it just needed to be said. Right. You know, j- just to get it out there. And just as far as the people who we are going to have on the show, just any anybody – you know, politicians, athletes, people who keeping it real, people who are gonna keep not it afraid of 1, the cancel 000. culture, not afraid of biting that. They they don't want to bite that tongue. My mom right. always told me, don't bite your tongue; it hurts. Right, right, it starts to bleed. So if you got something to say, it find a way to say it, but be completely honest about it. Like, you, don't sugarcoat it, you, bro. Who I really want to come on this show though is Brent, is Ben Crump. That would be your 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 ideal guest. That would be my ideal guest, bro. Why would you want Ben Crump on the show? Because I just want to see y'all go at it. <laughs> But nah, Ben, my boy, though, man. Like, I know Ben personally. Ben Crump, man. Funny shaped head. I just want to see how his head looking person for real. <laughs> but yeah, Ben Crump is a is an attorney. Yeah, he's civil rights attorney. Civil rights attorney. Out of attorney. Tallahassee, man. I mean, he's done so much. I don't know if you you seen Marshall with Chadwick Bozeman. Yeah. He's actually in it. At the end, he has Trayvon Martin parents in the movie as well. He's in that movie? He's in the movie at the very end. So Aww. he's he's doing everything he's he, his hands are in a lot of things right now and he and he's great at what he does right so yeah that's definitely my ideal guest ben crump man him ben crump or um any miami legends you would want to bring on i mean you in a 305 man trick daddy twd trick twd trick daddy twd uncle luke man look we got to get some we got to get some 90s hip-hop up here somebody man let's make it happen man and we just just be completely honest with him Straight no chaser, and it needs to be said. Say what's on your mind. Exactly. Be blunt and be honest. Exactly. All right, guys. Thank you so much for for just being a part of us today. For, for just watching us. Um, you can find us on all streaming platforms: YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and soon on iTunes. Um, and with that being said, thanks for joining. It needed to be said. <laughs>